this is awesome. I started a little early and I was rambling and then I remembered, oh my gosh, that will be in the replay and I'm just, you know, amusing myself by talking. I have to say most of the people I've met in our industry are pretty cool and funny and awesome and no pressure BJ to be funny and cool and awesome. Just be your adorable self. What we're going to do today is we'll get started and then we'll bring on BJ to talk. Uh, we have some questions for her. If we have time, because I want to, I'm very concerned. I want to respect your time. So we're going to talk to BJ. And then if we have time, we'll do some questions that we don't already have. I already have a couple questions from you guys. If we have time, we'll address those. But if you want to put those in the comments, we will um, answer them in the comments later. And then, because I can't juggle, I can't be live, talk to BJ and um, answer questions <laughs> because that's just way too many things. And so we will answer them later or we will table them for next week if you have questions. And if they're not um, life, uh, you know, altering questions, we can um, table them for next week so we can share that with everyone. But I'm, I'm happy to privately answer questions as well. Okay, so let me um, tell you a little bit about BJ and then I'll bring her on. BJ and I have known each other, I don't know how long, but we have both been licensed artists around the same arc of time. We have seen similar changes in the industry. We have yucked it up with each other at trade show booths and in trade shows. We have had heart to hearts over the phone and in coffee shops in New York and She's just, again, one of those people you should have in your life. You need a person like this that gets you, gets you and can have a conversation with you. She has done all kinds of um, licensed artwork. She's also a fine artist. She teaches on Skillshare. And I'm going to bring BJ on now and you guys can um, hear from her very own voice what she's all about. And then we'll work through some questions as well. So give me a sec. Speak amongst yourselves while I invite BJ. And just like that, and just she's like there. That. Okay, that's okay. There you go. There, there we go. That's so, better. everyone, this is BJ Lance, who also lives in Florida. Hi. I but do. She's on and the other coast, and it's still it's hot as you know here. You too. Know. Yeah, I know. And what, what what BJ and I have realized is we can't actually visit each other. <laughs> Because in between my coast and her coast is like crazy traffic. So we have to go to the like worst. another state to go and have coffee with each other because it would be a four hour drive across this little tiny state of Florida. Yeah. So anyway, so BJ, let's just get started. Why don't, in your own words, tell us a okay. little bit of the arc of your career and how you got into licensing. Okay. Well, first I have to say, I, I, I thought very carefully about what cup I wanted to use today. This is a Joyce Shelton cup. So oh, it's lovely. Yes. Okay, let's try to do cheers. Okay. Can we try to do okay, cheers? Here, cheers. There, there we, we go. go. Clink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, my first uh, art life was as a graphic designer, and I did that for about 18 years in advertising, and I worked for a big advertising agency, and I worked for a small advertising agency, and I also uh, freelanced for a long time, and after about 18 years of that, I was, I was getting a little burned out on it, and I wanted something different to do, and I started kind of looking around, and I thought, oh, maybe I can draw some pictures again, and maybe I can sell them as greeting cards. I mean, I had never even heard the word art licensing at all and I had no idea what it was and uh, and I kind of fell into art licensing it, it wasn't like it is today where you know you, you know everybody's heard of art licensing and there's just this explosion of information on the internet you know back when I got into it in 2001 you know most people didn't even have web pages and or websites they were actually pages mm -hmm. they were usually a landing page that was pretty much Yep, I'm on the internet. I've got a web page. You know, it wasn't really a whole lot of information. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of the manufacturers weren't on the internet at all. And no, and, no, it was like yeah. it was like pioneering times. Like, yeah, yeah. And it, and if you like, if you were going to a trade show and you wanted to get a meeting with somebody, you literally had to pick up the phone and call them and talk to them <laughs> to ask they, them they, for they, that appointment. Sometimes that still works. It sometimes does. That it's still amazing. Works. Yes. That still works. It's a crazy idea. Yeah, yeah. So. 
but um, but anyway, I as I was working in my graphic design career and getting a little burned out, um, I started kind of, and I don't, I, don't, I, I was going to say I Googled around, but I'm not even sure it was Google at the time. <laughs> it might have been Yelp or something like that. I don't remember what, Yahoo, that was it. Um, there you go. Yeah, I started searching around looking for like how to sell greeting cards. And I stumbled across uh, a publication called Greetings, Etc., which is, I don't believe they publish anymore at all now. I don't think so. But, but you could... Um, I, you could request a free copy of it. So I did. And of course, when I got it and I flipped through it, I realized very quickly that it was geared to retailers and not to artists. And uh, that was like my first little bit of understanding into the business. But in the back, there was this little tiny ad for this company called Lakeside Design. And it was in Lake Mary, which is in Orlando, which is an hour away from me. And they were advertising their services for like greeting card design and giftware design and so forth. And I was like, oh, wow, I, I should check them out when I get a chance. You know, I was kind of busy with some other things and I put it aside. And a few weeks later, my mother calls me and she goes, so I found this ad in the Orlando Sentinel for a graphic designer. And I said, OK, I don't want a job and I definitely don't want a job in Orlando. Yeah. Right. And right. Because uh, I was freelance. Because yeah. traffic. Because yes. Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, my best friend, Joyce Shelton, lives in Orlando. And every time I go over there, I say, I must really love you. <laughs> because it's just the traffic. Anyway. Um, so anyway, she said, no, 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 let me read the ad to you. Well, it turns out they were looking for a freelance graphic designer to help with designing greeting cards. And they also put together presentations for manufacturers and agents. Um, to you know, present to retailers and so forth. And so of course I put together my resume and my cover letter that couldn't be ignored and I sent it off and it was ignored. And uh, so, <laughs> you know, imagine that. So, so I picked up the phone and I called and I was promptly blown off by whoever answered the phone that day. And so I called back two days later and Joanne herself answered the phone. And, uh, and so I told her you know, why I was calling and she tried to blow me off real quick. And she was like, look, I got to go to a trade show tomorrow. I'm packing. I've got too much to do. I've got a, you know, a stack this thick of resumes. I don't have time. And I said, okay, I'll respect your time. I completely understand, but you need to shuffle my resume to the top and take it with you. And she just like stopped talking. And she said, why? And I said, because I'm a really good and dependable graphic designer and I'm really interested in greeting card design. And so we ended up chatting a little bit more and I got an appointment for an interview for when she got back and I went to the interview and about five pages into my portfolio, she was giving me a project. And wow. yeah, so I ended up freelancing to her for a few years and she gave me a very wide variety of projects that helped introduce me to different facets of the business and helped me understand different things in the business. And she took me to my first trade show in Atlanta, which is, I met you at that trade show. And I want to say it was 2002. Oh, wow. I want to yeah, say I, it probably was. Yeah. yeah, I do remember meeting you now that you yep. mention it because Joanna Jen. has always been very good at yep. introducing people to yep. other people. Yep. She's what do they call She's that? She's a connector. A, ju a, yetta, a, a, a yenta. A yet, uh, what do they call yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's I believe what, that's so. She, yes. yes. She's very good. She's at a that. connector. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah, well, you you and Jim had a meeting with her um, for two towns. You were you were she was sourcing art for something, mm -hmm. and so that and, and then you and I just and Jim we kept running into each other like everywhere we went after that, and so we just kind of just started talking, and then it became a joke every time we run into each other. Yeah, anyway, so so right. that that was kind of how I got into, well, not kind of that is how I got into art licensing. And, and then you eventually, so you were always freelance with her and then went further oh, yeah. freelance or were you? Yeah. No, okay. no I, yeah, no, I was freelance. I, um, I want to say I freelanced to her for about three years and, and I did so at a much reduced rate from what I normally freelanced for, which totally went against my core that, values. Well, you know, but you know, that is an interesting thing because that is, Sometimes that is called grad school. Yeah, it, you know, there, there was a reason. that transition, yeah. yeah. And I did that same thing. The three yep. years I worked at a stationary company, I called mm -hmm. it grad school. And it was just as hard as grad school, and I was just as broke. But yeah. I was 
actually working in the field. And then I was able to sort of launch the next phase. But sometimes grad school is really, really good for you. Yeah, so. yeah. And you, and you have to weigh what you're getting back out of it to, to, to offset working for, for such a reduced price. And I got a lot out of it. I mean, Joanne was a very, right. very good mentor. And, you know, talking about making connections, you know, I went to several trade shows with her. And she literally, the first one is in particular, she literally let me sit in every single meeting she went to for three days. I learned so much in three days from sitting in those meetings, just like a little mouse in the, on the corner, listening and watching everything that was going on. And it was like I got this crash course in what goes on and how to talk to clients and, you know, and just how meetings go and what to expect. So, right. So, you know, that, that what a great was, experience. Yeah, it, it really was. You know, of course, you know, I had to go fetch her water and carry stuff and everything. But <laughs> <laughs> again, again, what we do sometimes. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, but it, but it was good. I, I did get a lot out of it. And I'm very appreciative of, of all the connections right. and, and, um, and so forth. So, um, so from there, you just started reaching out on your own and finding did. other projects beyond the stationery and greeting cards. I did. I did. I, I started, you know, like kind of developing products and, you know, not just flat art, but I was actually designing products themselves. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, yeah, and just, you know, just hitting it hard. I mean, those those years in the beginning, you know, of course, I had a whole lot of energy and, you know, I was hitting it really hard. I mean, I went to all the shows, as you know, because I saw you at... <laughs> At all the shows. At all the shows. Yeah. Well, and you know, we had to, at the time, we really had to go to all the shows because there, there, you know, it, I mean, yes, there was the internet, but, you know, Facebook hadn't really arrived mm -hmm. in any mm -hmm. meaningful way. Yeah. And there weren't ways to connect with each other as easily as we can now. So we had to do that. It's still important when that opportunity is available to you to do that. I Absolutely. don't think it's a, always a critical thing that you have to do mm -hmm. but whenever you can it makes sense if you're not going to break the bank or you know or it, if you physically can't do it or whatever that is it's not the only way to do this but that's a great thing well let me ask you a quick question what if, if you were to you know I will not sing share but if you could turn back time um <laughs> well I mean I always come on I Ronnie alone, I'd be singing nope, nope. share <laughs> But what would you do differently? Would you do anything differently than you did now? I mean, what did you learn from the, the I mean, what would you, if you were, okay, what if you were starting today, what would you do differently than you did when you started? Did that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and it's so kind of a question in there. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I get it. I get it. it. It is a hard question to answer, I guess, from this side of the, the, the fence, but one of the things I did in the beginning that I think, you know, now I just go, uh, is I tried to cover like all the themes, all the categories, because, you know, all the manufacturers are looking for everything from not just the florals and the pretty stuff and everything like that. They also want, they want Easter and they want Halloween and they want Christmas and they want St. Patrick's Day and they want Valentine's Day. And so I was trying to do all these things and get them all in my portfolio and everything. And because I am a jack of all art trades. I mean, I can, yes. I can create just about anything. And, and I think that comes from all my years as a graphic designer and working on so many different types of clients and having them having to look different, you know. So I, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just my, my little unicorn hat there. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, I know. That, and, Ronnie, you, you named me a unicorn. So yeah, I, she, I, I didn't like, make You're a unicorn. I You're didn't... a unicorn. Because she, uh, BJ's background has so, I mean, she has a lot of those kinds of skills art direction and understanding typography and all of the mm -hmm. stuff because of everything that came before, mm -hmm. you know, that's what, that's what happens. And you yeah. just sort of become a unicorn because you haven't specialized in one specific track. Right. Okay. So I and interrupted you on that, okay. but that's then okay. what happened? And, and I also have the business side of the brain as well, because I freelanced for a really long time and, you know, having to be responsible for all your own stuff, <laughs> that's, you know, but, but, you know, trying to hit all those categories and all those themes, just, it was, it was kind of exhausting. And, you know, I look at that art now, I'm in the process right now of totally just cleaning out my portfolio and redoing stuff. And, um, you know, I see some of that stuff and it's like, oh, God, 
Jeez, what were you thinking? Well, you know, it's the same yeah. as we look at our hair from various eras and yeah. think the same thing. So yeah. everything's going to have that moment. And yeah, you just but have to, I, think, you know. I think that art that I did for like Halloween or Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day, it was just kind of like gratuitous in a way. It was like, you know, I'm doing right. it because I think I have to have it in my portfolio. But, I, you know, it didn't come from here. You know, right. it came from here, you know, and it shows it shows when you do that. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point to, to, you know, sort of take what you want and leave what you don't. Mm -hmm. Kind of like going to a buffet, you know, mm -hmm. no on the baby corn. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, those are olives. evil. Yes. Oh, oh, those two. Oh, that's literally the face I make if I get a black olive in my salad on accident. Oh. But I, I do think that that's a, that's a good point to remember that sometimes, you know, when you're a working artist, you don't get the luxury of saying, no, thanks, I don't want to work on that. But when it's this core reaction, this physical reaction, or if it doesn't uh, jive with your values or your viewpoint or whatever, then leave it behind. You, you yeah. get to do that. Yep. True. Yeah. So in other words, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but so, so you would have, if you could turn back time, again, share you would say, I'm not going to do the stuff that doesn't speak to me. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I would, I would start niching down faster. Oh, that is really interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. you know, and I resisted that like so much in the beginning because, you know, as you know, unicorn, you know, I have a lot of different styles. I'm not a, you know, like you, you see some people's art, you know, immediately, you go, boom, you, yeah. boom, I know who that is. You know, you can recognize it right away, but that's not true with me. I remember the first mm -hmm. time I exhibited at Surtex, there was somebody sitting in my booth and they're flipping through and they started to look around at the walls and they went, how many artists do you represent? <laughs> Trust me and the people that live inside me. <laughs> True story. <laughs> True story. <laughs> okay, so we have seen the track of the business change over the course of our careers. Mm -hmm. And what do you find frustrating in, in the way the world works right now? What do you find frustrating in this world? Oh, um, actually, I'll refer to, to the the talk that you did just recently on the surface pattern designers uh, group, where you gave five questions. Coming soon to coming soon coming to soon to a class group. near you. Yeah, yeah, and that would be a really good one for a lot of people. Thank you. If if and if if nobody saw that or if nobody saw that, <laughs> but but whoever didn't see that, it was five right. questions to evaluate whether you should go down a rabbit hole after an idea because right. as we know that it's shiny, oh. shiny boo, you know shiny, yes you oh know. another idea yeah. another yeah. idea yeah and, yeah and that right there i i think that's probably one of the things that's really frustrating me right now in this point in time because for those years before i had the studio you know between when i gave up my my graphic design and went all in on licensing because i straddled that world for about three years before licensing actually started to make enough money that i could start letting go of my graphic design clients another good point yeah. yes yeah yeah it is not a get rich quick scheme it's not a get rich quick it's not a get rich scheme at all <laughs> but let's just put it that way but uh but you know there was a period of time there where i was making some pretty darn good scratch and sure. you know yeah. and i was really excited and it was like all of a sudden man it just started going down like really fast and and i know it wasn't me because i saw it happening to everybody and everybody that i talked to it was happening to you know blame it on the economy or the industry or the proliferation of competition or the the companies buying each other up or you know all of the above all of the yes. above whatever it is and but but between those years i was making really good money doing one thing and mm -hmm. focusing on one thing and now it's you literally have to juggle several careers and not only do you have to juggle the careers you have to juggle the promotion and the social media and all the things that come with it and the back end, you know, it's like, Oh, I can open a society six shop. That sounds easy. Oh, until you start looking at like formatting the art and picking the art and curating it and figuring it out and, and then doing all the back end in the shop and everything. And now 
let's get on social media and try to get people to buy this crap, you know? It's right. Like, you know? Right. And yeah. So, you know, and then it's like, oh, I can teach classes on Skillshare. And then it's like, okay, well, you know, it takes me, uh, I've, I've done two classes. I had four planned in that series. And once I got to the end of two, I was like, I'm not sure I want to do the rest of these, quite honestly, because it took me a month each to do those, literally, of almost focused time between the time it took me to outline the classes and and film the classes and edit the classes and refilm pieces and, you know, do all the overhead stuff and everything and, you know, and the editing, ugh, you know, all of that stuff. And it, it really, I mean, really in the end, it wasn't too bad. And I got a little better at it by the second one. And I probably would have been even better by the third one, but, you know, other things started popping up that needed my attention that were making me more money than Skillshare. So I was right. So right. it's like, okay, that's where my attention has to go. And, you know, so I, I think that's what's frustrating me right now is that I can't just focus on one thing and run with it because you can't make enough money at any one thing. It seems, it seems maybe, right. it, maybe, it's, right. maybe it's just, you me. know, and that is a, that yeah. is a big, big question that I have been pondering a lot. And that is why not to segue into a infomercial, but that is why I've been developing this five questions to ask yourself. And they're good way. ones. They're very good Thank ones. Thank you. And I will, uh, I will have that conversation with you guys on Coffee with Ronnie because I, I think it's important. And I actually used the process because I'm always testing my own process because everybody on here knows how much I adore testing things because that's the only way you know whether something in, is going to work. But I actually had an idea and I walked myself through the, this, this questionnaire, if you will, and realize that that was I had to put it in the cool idea not right now category and it sounds like that's where you came with Skillshare that yeah yes I can do this yes it has some value but not right now and maybe not this series of classes but yeah. it's, it, sometimes you need to go through that whole exercise to do that mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't want to get too far down the road or into the weeds of it and go okay I hate this or yeah. it didn't make me any money or whatever that is. And I think that that is part of our world right now is that that evaluation needs to happen a little sooner, but then there's the other side of the coin. And, and I, there's a, several books on this and I've been reading a lot about this is that do one thing like concentrate on one thing, which is another topic that I'm formulating that I want to talk to all you guys about. And that's, so, that's, I'm oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, so where are you now? That's, I mean, where, that's where, what, where, that's, where did you land on that? That's what I'm trying to do is focus primarily on one thing right now, which is back on the licensing, which I've been doing licensing all along. As, as you know, mm -hmm. um, and the rest of you may not know, but um, I... I um I had a studio, a fine art studio for uh, a painting studio, I should say, for six years, and I got into cold wax and oil painting, which was just fantastic. I love it, and and I started going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I mean, I I did uh, my biggest one was like five foot by five foot, literally my wingspan. Wow! And I, I sold several of those. For some reason, my very large paintings sell, and um, but but anyway, I. I had found a very reasonable flex space, 650 square feet, a mile away from my house. I would walk there. Nice. I would ride, oh, awesome. Ride my bike there. And it was very reasonably priced six, well, now seven years ago. And as landlords do, they kept raising the rent every year. And I can't blame them because they can get it all day, you know. Right. But there gets to be a point where my return on investment isn't working anymore and I can't justify that overhead anymore for a space that I'm spending more of my time in my home office here working on the licensing stuff that's actually paying the bills because the, the art, I was, I was selling art and I was making enough to cover my overhead of the studio, but that's all I was making. And, you know, I wasn't making a living, just enough to cover the overhead of the studio, which was quite a bit in the end. And, and then when I looked at the amount of time that it took to make just that money to cover the studio, it was taking way more time than, than it should have for the amount of money that, that was coming from it, that was right. in, in the end, was just keeping my door open there and nothing further. 
And, and then it, it just became this exhaust uh, cycle of exhaustion, really, be, because whenever I was there, I felt like I should be here. Whenever I was here, I felt like I should be there. And, you know, I, I just felt like I was running too much and I was trying to do two things and I wasn't succeeding well at either one of them. But, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I did it because that was always a dream of mine to have a painting studio. And I used to, right. and, I, and I used to just hold it right here, you know, and I used to just think, you know, one day I'm going to have a, a, just a little place I can go and paint by myself. And, and even if I only have it for six months, that'll be fine. And when I was making the good scratch I was talking about there, I kept squirreling some away towards this because I knew mm -hmm. I want, I knew I wanted to do this. And then there was a point where I kind of looked at my little stash of nuts there. And I said, you know, I, thought, <laughs> I said, I think I can do this. You know, I, I think I can do it. And I started looking around and just luckily found that spot. But, you know, as I said, last June, last summer, it got to a point where it was just too much. I, 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 couldn't, afford, I couldn't afford to keep it open anymore. So I, I made the decision. My, my lease was up at the end of June and I just made the decision, well, I, I'm out of here. And, right. um, and so I did that. And honestly, the idea for the Skillshare classes came right at that time. And I was going to do it in my studio and I was actually going mm -hmm. to stay there a little bit longer and do it. But somebody moved in next door with a very loud like freezer or refrigerator compressor or something oh. that was running in there. It was picking up on the audio so bad. And, and plus I could hear it in there. It was right against my painting wall. It was like, okay, oh. yeah, it's time to go. So, but I, I was forced so, to So then when you sort of, so you regrouped back to licensing. So it's sort of like you're licensing 2.0. So what, what, yeah. what would you say you're doing differently now than you did in well, your first round well one of the things like what i just said before is i'm niching down a lot more you know and, mm -hmm. and i'm and i'm still finding myself in that cycle all of a sudden that i think i should do this because oh look there's an art call for this oh i could knock one of those out and it's like yeah, stop it stop it stop it stop it stop it <laughs> you know don't don't right you don't right. want to do valentine's stop it <laughs> you know yeah and you know so, yeah. I, so i'm trying to focus my attention and i'm really getting into digital painting I mean, the, the Photoshop brushes and stuff have just come like a really long oh, way. Yeah. And, you know, there's just some really good stuff out there that I've found. And, and I'm kind of developing a style with that that seems to be going over pretty well. And, and I can knock it out pretty quick and, you know, feel you, good about do you it. Feel, do you feel energized by yeah. what you're working on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. That's, I do. A, that's a good feeling. Yeah, that's yeah. a good feeling because it does get, um, you know, when you're doing the same thing or working in the same industry for a while, it does, it sometimes you, you know, you need something to refresh your instrument, if you will, mm -hmm. your brain, your heart, your what's going on. And, and sometimes, yeah. and I, I believe that things like taking a break or saying I'm going to paint for six months and see what happens if you can afford to do that you come back with fresh eyes and fresh attitude because you're not slogging slogging yep. away because how going, many I have to come up with another yeah. snowman or another whatever <laughs> and you know yeah I was just gonna say yeah. I, I I do a lot of flags I I have made a lot of money off of flags and I really did reach the point where I can't do another flag. I can't. I just, I can't. Same I can't. shape, same, can't. Yeah. Uh, same <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, yeah, I know. And, you know, and as my Irish granny would say, God love them, the ones that can do that. And I think that's great. And, you know, you can, and that's why I think I've always said that licensing, particularly when it was, you know, good. Um, it was great for us with short attention <laughs> Way spans back because when. we could work on, you know, yeah. you can work on, I'm going to do some flags this week and I'm going to do Christmas and blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, it does help us people, you know, that, that can do a whole bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that, that it keeps mm -hmm. you sort of going. Um, I want to, I'm looking at the time we have, we definitely have a couple minutes here. Do you have any, a couple of tips, and then I want to go into a question that was sent to us that I think is really good, particularly for you in your experience, BJ. Okay. So, um, any like sort of couple tips that you would give somebody that wants to do sort of on the licensing product design side? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll address that in a second. But something you had mentioned in your little notes that you sent me was asking what I was excited about. And, oh, right, right. Um, 
I'm really excited about this coloring book I'm working on. I've got a oh, oh my gosh, I've seen pages. It's super cute. It's super it, cute. If I do say so myself, it's adorable. And I am having so much fun with it. It's, it's a specific Paris theme that I'm working on. And I've got an idea for like a whole series of them. And it, it, unfortunately I just can't spend all my time working on it because I do have to do other things that you know are needed and asked for and you know whatever you know got to get it out there but um but anyway that's something I'm really excited about that lights me up that I'm almost kind of keeping over here as you know this little thing okay so you can go work on that for an hour you know right. you know what I mean well, it's like well, a treat, I believe in know? carrots and sticks yeah. carrots and sticks yeah. work and that if that's your carrot then that is awesome well you know what I was going to say is it, it is a really good example because I know this and well that that BJ loves Paris and you've been there lots of times I've been there nine and times and I'm going back for my 10th in October with Joyce Shelton cool yeah but you know if she's marrying this passion for Paris with her art skills. So it's becoming a passion project that also could bring a little money. And so I think when you really pay attention to those things, like what do, what else do you love? Is it food? Is it, you know, um, I'm looking at Pam uh, Branch on here and it's like, is it Scottish Highlands? You know, is it, what is it that, that you can also bring? Like what is in your heart that you bring right. to the market? Because there are other people that are going to bring something, they're, they're going to have that same thing. And so sometimes when licensing feels a little bit of a slog and you're not excited about it, start to look at the other things that you love and how do your talents you know, where does that twain meet on between mm -hmm. your talents and your passions? And I think that those can be some really cool things. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I am too. You. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate your tips when I, cause I, I sent Ronnie like the first page I did and I said, am I on the right track with this? And she said, you know, junk it up some more, you know, put, put some more stuff in there, you know, <laughs> <laughs> more, yeah. more colorization. Yeah. 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 Uh, the like, set, oh, there's okay, a sweet yeah. spot of how much yeah. detail to get in there. Yeah. And so cool. Yeah, so, yes. Um, but for tips, um, well, one of the tips we kind of already talked about a little bit, but uh, I'll just say, like, you know, don't feel like you have to hit all of the trends, you know, unless it's something that really speaks to you. Or, you know, don't feel like you have to hit any of the trends unless it's something that speaks to you. Because I, I know, and I'm one of these who gets caught up in that thing, too. It's like, oh, maybe I should do llamas with cute little sweaters because everybody's doing llamas with cute little sweaters. But I And who doesn't love a llama in a cute sweater? I yeah. love llamas in cute sweaters. But <laughs> honestly, I really have no desire to draw llamas in cute sweaters. And that would show if I did it. And, right. and, and I dare say, even if somebody asks you to draw llamas in cute sweaters and you don't want to draw llamas in cute sweaters, don't do it because it is going to be the most miserable project you've ever worked on. If you say yes yeah. to doing something you know you don't want to do. I've done that. Right. It's miserable. And you, and you just end up slogging through it. You, you don't deliver as good as you could if it was something that you actually wanted to do. Um, right. You know, um, another tip I would say is don't take rejection personally, especially in the mm. art, especially in the art license, any art business, quite honestly, any art, any, I mean, being, being a graphic designer in the advertising industry, you know, gave me an elephant hide, but you know, really, right. you know, you just people, you know, it's like, okay, fine. You don't like it. I don't care. You know, it's like, yeah. or you yeah. want to, well, you, you want to be a white shade of blue, you know, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, exactly. Know? Yeah, I'm yeah. not, I, I, this isn't that precious to me. You want it blue, what shade? I'm happy to change it to blue. Even though I think it looks better in green, I don't care. We'll make it blue, you know, right. it, but, but don't take rejection personally. I mean, I literally went to a meeting one time um, in Atlanta with somebody who I had met with many, many times. And this was back when we didn't have iPads. We carried books and, I mean, we had rolly bags <laughs> because these, we had so many books of portfolios and they were thick and everything. And I remember this guy, he literally like did one of these. I don't have a, well, maybe I've got one handy. He literally did one of these. Yeah. With, oh, I know. With three books. And then he said, yeah, there's nothing I want. And he walked out. <laughs> he walked out. And I sat there and went, you gotta be kidding me. You know, it, but you're always going to have rude people like that. And this is somebody I had done business with before. You know? Wow. 
and yeah. you know and, and well and you know the beauty of that is and this is what I always tell people those become your funny stories yeah those become the oh, stories what? even though you remember them those are the stories that you tell and, and then everybody that's on this side of the desk goes, oh my gosh, I've been there. And then they swap their own story. Of we should do somebody. an episode of that. We just... Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, story. it would be. Well, I, I remember when we were at Two Town Studios and we would be at a trade show with multiple books and I would be sitting there with my name badge that says Ronnie Walter on it. And they'd be looking at Ronnie Walter's book and they'd go, well, this is what they'd usually say. I don't like his work at all. <laughs> Here's my name at your eye level, the way you're looking, but and then you're also going, yeah, his work, I'm it's yeah. just not doing they just it for seem me. Walter. So you're like, yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, that's fine. Anyway, that's okay. Funny. I have a question okay. from a viewer, um, okay. Daniela, who is adorable. I don't know if she's here. If she is, she's on a totally different time zone than the rest of us because she's in Australia. Um, so this question, and I think this is a good one for both of us, and 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 you can answer to this because of well, because of the fine art side, but she asked because she's both an illustrator and a fine artist. Okay. How important is it to split off your worlds, like have an Instagram account for your fine art and have your licensing on a different track? Or how far should you split those or should you at all? What are, what are your thoughts on that, BJ? Well, my thoughts on that are if you're if your if your work looks similar, if your fine art work and your licensing work has a very similar vibe and can cross over each other, then I don't see any reason to split them apart because splitting them apart is a pain in the butt. And mm -hmm. you know, but it's for, double work. Yeah, yeah, like like for me, I have BJ Lance Studio, which was my fine art feed. Which honestly, I've been kind of struggling with how to put myself back out there because I'm not really doing that the way I used to do that. And you know, and I think I think I just need to go back into it. And I also don't want to publish stuff that I'm working on like right this minute. I don't want to publish right. fresh fresh new stuff until it's been seen by the manufacturers and so forth. So I'm kind of like struggling with, well, how do I put myself back out there with that? But anyway, this isn't about me. This is uh, this is her question. I think that's a good yeah, point but... though. When it is, a, it looks a little more seamless. Mm -hmm. My feeling is, you have to think about your audience is that if you are really talking to collectors, people that buy paintings. Yeah, they're not going to they, be interested you, in You licensing. are just going, well, and you don't want to confuse them. My whole thing is, am I confusing anybody by telling them this? Now, if I had a website that's just all about my art and my art licensing, the art licensing people would be perfectly happy to go look at my fine art. That, though, that goes that direction. The... I think it confuses people that are there to buy a painting or a print or something to go, what's this art licensing thing? I don't understand this. And why is all of a sudden she's showing me a greeting card that doesn't look anything like this. Right. So I right. think it depends on what your intention is and really looking at who your customer is and who you're trying to talk to. And that's why I made the decision to kind of have Ronnie Walter, um, you know, the licensing right. business side and then do a whole other persona of Ronnie Walter art because I don't, I think that's too confusing for people like, well, who are you? And mm -hmm. so I think it has to, you have to go down to that sort of more granular, granular level to say, who am I trying to talk to and how are these people different? And right. How do they want to be talked to? And then maybe that is, you can easily do that split. And a lot of people do that. They just have a button on there. You know, it's yeah. like, I'm an artist. Especially, like you said, if your work is like, when you are really more like a lifestyle artist, if you will, like everything you do emotes who you are and what you do, and mm -hmm. there's not a bunch of style differences, then it makes sense. Like mm -hmm. buy my original painting or buy my coffee cup of that thing. Mm -hmm. and so I yeah. think that has to be, um, I can't and answer that for Daniela. I know her work, but I think that is where sort of where you have to go, okay, who, who, who's on here and how do I want to talk to them? Right. Cause that's all that matters is you, you don't want anybody coming on your website or on your Instagram feed and go, I don't get what she does. I don't be know how to work with her. Because confused buyers don't buy. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Very and good. I, yes. I want to say something about a comment that I was just looking at here. Uh, Tammy. Hi, Tammy. So I know Tammy. 
Um, I bought jewelry from Tammy. Um, she's, oh, cool. Uh, honestly, Tammy, I have noticed what you've been doing on Instagram and Facebook lately. She's been doing this whole series of Meet the Maker. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, right. I have seen those go by. I'm fascinated by them. Yeah, yes. yeah. And, and, and I stop and I look at every one that she does. And I say, well, this is really interesting. And I have thought, Tammy, I've thought, you know, I should do that. That's really what I should do. So thanks for, for, uh, for that saying that. That is a good way to jump in. Yeah. Go, this is who I am. This is my background. Mm -hmm. This is my pathway. This is how I got to where I am mm -hmm. here. Um, right. I think that's a really, really good point. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, my Instagram is BJ Lance Studio. And, you know, if you look through it, it's pretty much all fine art, and that's all it is. And it's like all of a sudden I'm going to start posting stuff that isn't necessarily fine art. And But BJ Lance Studio is still who I am, even though it's not my painting studio anymore. I'm still BJ Lance Studio. So I don't want to start a whole new like BJ Lance licensing or something like that. So, right. so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, slide on back into that. And maybe, you know, as Tammy said, doing the meet the maker thing might be a way to do it. You know, and, and you right. know, you lose followers, you lose followers because they're not your peeps well, anymore. Yeah, exactly. You know, well, they're and not I do your buyers think too that anymore. Yeah, that everything we do, we have to remember, nothing is set in stone. And, and things, you know, uh, what, what is the term I'm looking for? Oh, well, things just, things need to be edited. And sometimes you, people don't really, and plus people aren't paying as much attention to us as we think. I know, I know, <laughs> so, really. So everybody everybody taking things the away phone. and nobody really notices mm -hmm. when you're replacing them with something good or something, you know, that, that is more meaningful to them or closer to who your true real customer is. Mm -hmm. And I think really starting to understand who you're really, who are you really talking to? Because you don't just walk into an auditorium and start speaking on your topic when you don't know if they're, you know, automotive manufacturers or, you know, yoga teachers, you know, mm -hmm. you would want to know going in, who are you talking to? And so that is the, you know, that is, that's got to be like the, the whole nut of this thing of really understanding who you're talking to exactly and then talk to them then talk to them <laughs> then talk lot. to them <laughs> yeah <laughs> Hi, just... me again. yes so i can talk cool <laughs> yes absolutely well i um i have so enjoyed this me you're too. a delightful guest oh, thank you. and um I'm I miss going having to... coffee in person with you. I know. We, we need to, to get New on York the phone. To do that. I know, right? Well, I know. Well, well we I need know. to get on the phone more often even just. We do. And uh, we all should be doing that. So let's yeah. just schedule all phone calls all the time. And so <laughs> I um, thank you again. You brought well, so I... much wisdom oh, oh, to the table. Uh, oh, yes. Thank you. I'm Actually, I'm very flattered to be asked to be the first guest on Live with Ronnie. First guest. I'm, cool. I'm, I am. I'm very flattered. Thank you. Awesome. And by, and by wow. the way, that, that photograph that you used with the coffee cup, that was taken in Paris by Monica Lee. <laughs> oh, how funny. Oh, see, it all comes full circle. It's a beautiful, and, beautiful thing. And I was her third interview when she started Smart Creative. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So. Well, good. I um, will thank everyone for being here. I realize you're Time is precious. I appreciate you being here. I hope it was um, fruitful oh, for you. I will um, be, you know, if you have any comments, I will pop in now, um, now that I only will have one task to do instead of several. I'll pop on and, and look too and see. Yeah, what yeah, 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 yeah. And um, oh. I, uh, and again, next week, any um, questions you guys want to ask, feel free to come on over and ask. <laughs> and so we'll talk to y'all soon. And uh, by the way, stay caffeinated here. Cheers. 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 Uh, here, cheers. <laughs> cheers. We'll figure it out. Bye, Bye, Bye kids. <laughs> Bye, everybody.